This is my doubts on a Monday. Welcome back, everybody, for another episode of the song that changed my life. Um, as you know, this is the first, oh my gosh, this is the first episode back after the new year. Um, super exciting. I'm really, really glad that you guys are all here and, uh, you know, starting off the year on a positive note uh, with, you know, joy as our, as our uh Leading, leading emotion, love as our battlefield, uh, battle armor type thing, and uh, empowering songs as our, you know, anthems. Uh, so to join me tonight, we've got all the way from Aotearoa, aka New Zealand, uh, a, a wonderful friend of mine uh, who has been playing in um, in the music scene of New Zealand for I don't even know how long. Um, Trevor Fabel of Date Month, yeah, many, just a couple. Many, just, many just, years. Yeah. Just a couple of years. All the way uh, from uh, Hamilton, New Zealand is Trevor Fabel from Date Month here. How are you doing? Kia ora, my friend. I am doing well. Um, lovely and warm, and it's because it's summer here. But I guess we've already figured that one out. And hope, wait, and wait, how are you? wait. There's two different countries, like two countries on the other side of the world. They have different seasons. What? The- <laughs> oh, I know. It's 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 all, and we're all we're a day ahead as well. So it's it's the fifth here, not the fourth here, I believe. That's exciting. That's exciting. Yes. Well, thank you for waking up early enough to to join me and shower and stuff before before this podcast. I know that it's always a pleasure. <laughs> Um, cool. So we're just talking about, um, you know, kicking off the year on, on a positive note. And, um, you know, this, yes. this particular podcast series uh, is a little bit different when it comes to talking about positive notes, because this isn't about being a, a space for being positive. My, my last podcast, Real Talk, was about finding positivity and finding resilience in, in manners of uh, strife or hardship. But mm. today we're talking about um, how you channel as a songwriter, how you channel grief and hardship and, you know, the, the trials and tribulations that the world throws at us on a, on a regular basis, how to channel that in a positive, creative way through songwriting. Uh, and of mm. course, this is in support of my la- latest book, um, My Life, My Songs, My Healing, and will be leading into my second book. But um, I, I'm really curious because I'm just one songwriter. I'm really curious about the experiences and um, the the processes for other songwriters. So I'm really, really chuffed that you're here talking about your song March, um, which I believe, you know, there's there's a, one of the things I really love about your songwriting style in particular is that you have this ability to write lyrics that are relatable to many different dialects of human being. Um, you know, it's, it's vague enough to, you know, relate, be relatable to a, a broad range of people, but it's also very specific for your own um, experiences. So before we get started, tell me, first of all, who you are, um, how do you fit into the the songwriting realm, um, and what makes Trevor Favell Trevor Favell? Well, thanks for giving me the opportunity. I am Trevor the Favell. Uh, Thanks for having me on on the pod cast so with songwriting for me it evolved uh from my day job which many years ago it was still is is a a music education and most of us get qualified in music education but uh, many of us don't do the do as the saying goes Mm -hmm. and so uh, one of the requirements in the new zealand curriculum when it comes to music is we have to teach composition we have to teach that process and i felt many years ago when I started that that was pretty hypocritical of me to be not doing that myself mm. if you're going to be telling kids what to do <laughs> you know you need to be doing it your damn self and, and I stick with that and I still do so that's where songwriting began with me a composition really because I you know it's that's the whole deal but the original process for me was a challenge for myself it's like you know if I'm making the if I'm making the children do it I need to do it Mm-hmm. And so I sat down and basically started working on it, on evolving a style because that was the next sort of thing I had to work out. And um, I had to think about how I was going to approach it. And uh, my number one goal was because I'm a music teacher and, and a really experienced musician, I get bored very quickly mm-hmm. with music. So uh, I normally give music videos or songs. I give them 30 seconds and and I, I need to be interested and it could be for any number of reasons so i've tried to apply that to myself the number one i don't want to be boring myself with you know songs and songwriting and particularly lyrics mm-hmm. 
So that was my standpoint, starting point, really. And the end result of that is that one, you get a bit isolated because I just refuse to write in certain ways. But the other part of it is it's because I write the way that I'm going to write that I can actually look back 10 years and go, no, nope, I'm, I'm happy with that. That bit of work stands because it was what I wanted to do at the time. Mm-hmm. I've that's got a bit cool. off topic, haven't I? No, I, I, that, that, that's okay. That's what music's all about is, you know, going with, moving with your gut, I believe. <laughs> no, that's yeah. cool. So um, can you tell me a bit about the, the your particular song today that you were, ch- were chatting about, March? Yes. Um, what was the, you know, what was the uh, inspiration for March? Okay, so there was there's two key elements. One was the month of March, which was when my mother died of cancer uh, it was very 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 quick uh, that was one key thing so it was me a little bit of processing of that loss and that um, thing and I had the title and various ideas that I mucked around with for a long long time and then the other key element that started it off was uh, when a student uh, took their own life a few well, many years ago now and uh, maybe your viewers aren't too familiar with New Zealand but New Zealand and uh, suicide is shall we say a thing Mm -hmm. it's a big it's a big thing so you work in education you have to come to terms with suicide basically on on a very regular basis so there was two those were the two key elements and i wanted to combine the idea of loss grief and the process that you might go through without resorting to and this was the big challenge for me was not resorting to too much cheese Right. Or, or also too much, uh, I don't know what the word is, but too much too much me. I don't right. like the idea. Uh, I don't like writing in, in first person. I, I think I used the, I think I used I in this song, but I don't usually use it. I, 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 my basic premise is I don't think I am particularly interesting and I don't right. think I need to share my stuff. So the idea was to create this song was to create a situation and maybe create a character which I do in most of the songs I write, create a right. character and, and go through the whole process through that. It's interesting that you uh, talk about cheese when discussing issues of suicide. Um, yeah. w- w- what do you mean by that? Mawkish, um, slight. It's, okay. it's, a heavy, it's a heavy thing. And, and there's a lot of people who can uh, approach stuff and, and it gets too sentimental and it gets to I, 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 and there's plenty of people that do that. And I guess there's plenty of people who can do that better than I can. Right. So my own personal approach is, is to kind of step back a little bit mm-hmm. and approach things, maybe a bit metaphorical, allegorical, okay. that, that kind of thing. I think I can do that best. Uh, that's, and that's how I've tended to, to approach it. Right. Okay. Okay. Um, it's a very it's the timing of this is um you know obviously important to you uh with regards to yes, we're coming up to march obviously and i think yeah. uh this season the holiday season especially during you know we're still in the middle of a pandemic here in the states you guys in new zealand have soldiered on and soldiered through and overcome in many ways um but there Pretty has much, been yeah. there has been a um you know huge influx of suicides across the world um in response to you know the pandemic uh Mm. and obviously new zealand does have a very high um depression rate and a very high suicide rate um how is it that you navigate that as a songwriter uh and then navigate the fact that this that the subject matter is so heavy so deep so complicated so uh complex so still going on yeah. You know, it's, it's not something yeah. that you can, you know, fix overnight. And it's something that, no. you know, generations yeah. upon generations. How, so what, how, like, what is your process through writing in that kind of environment? Well, what my process is quite direct and, and you could call it distance, but okay. I, I, I've read, uh, I read a great deal, um, a bit literary. I read lots and lots of books, okay. lots. So, and I've got a degree in English literature. So I do a lot of the way I write, I use a lot of, I use the word classical. Mm-hmm. So meta, metaphor is a really powerful thing. 
Mm-hmm. And uh, allegory is another powerful thing, you know, visual imagery, words, that kind of thing. I think that's a really powerful way to evoke feeling and meaning without it being too didactic. I'm really not keen on uh, didactic songwriting. So I don't like to be telling people what to think or how to feel. That's something we've learned, uh, you know, in the education process with dealing with us from a, from a school or from a family basis is that, you know, you can, there's a whole lot of different responses. And as soon as you start channeling down to naming one or naming another, you, you, you're cutting people's responses off. Mm. And communication is key. If you're going to deal with this issue at all, it's about, you know, dealing with it. But I think the way I like to approach it in the song is that it's, it's a pretty good melody. And there's some, there's some, you know, strong bits in it. And I think, you know, if you add some words that are there to be enjoyed on that way, but if you guys looking at looking beneath it, you can see more and then you can find your own meaning in there. And I think that's really, really important. Mm-hmm. I think if you, someone can listen to that and go, well, you know, what's that opening line? Wrote a letter to God. What's a letter to God? What does that mean? Mm-hmm. You know, and if you dig a bit deeper, you might think, well, maybe that's, that's the kind of message someone might leave behind. That mm-hmm. sort of, that sort of a thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so that's the way I, I like to approach it so it's it's a very it's a standoff kind of approach but it's also allows people to go through and dig and dig their own you know find their own meaning and find their own thing in there that's certainly what I did with songs when I was listening to songs I always used to listen to it that way yeah yeah I love that and it, it's interesting because you know I think even when, when you're when you're talking about like writing letters to God I think it's one of those things that when you are in, even if you were, uh, you know, an atheist, um, hmm. I think that's something that you kind of, you can still relate to yep. because when you're at the end of your tether, you kind of, you, you, you kind of start feeling like, um, you know, you've got no other options. And just so, yeah. While, while many Christians will say that God is their first option, um, it's, you know, it's, and I, and I only bring that up because I recognize that living in New Zealand, um, it's not a very Christian country, whereas living in America, everybody will be writing a letter to God as their first kind of option. So I, yeah. I, I'm really fascinated by that juxtaposition between how different countries would approach suicide and depression and, and uh, you know, turning to religion and spirituality. Um, what for you personally, um, beyond the, the songwriting practice of, you know, adjusting to personalizing the song for yourself and, using I statements and, you know, still digging into those metaphors that you like to use. Has Mm. there been any um, breakthroughs that you achieved from writing March? Yeah. um, The the key thing for me was that I think with, with March in particular, I found that I've made a, a statement that was pretty much connected with, no, I'm not explaining it very well. Use your words, Fable. Uh, <laughs> the, the end result was what I intended. There we go. Okay, what was the end result? So, well, the end, <laughs> the end result is I wanted people to, to actually get an emotional reaction okay. to this particular issue and this particular song. So, And I didn't want to make a, a, a pointed reference to this and that, but I wanted people to listen to it and actually go through the process with it. You know, so each verse in the song or each segment of the song is a different step on the journey. You know, and and the last part is a sort of big kind of epic finish where you go sailing, kind of sailing off into the sunset. Mm. And so the words to me match the music and the melody matched the words and very much the whole thing sort of came together. I think it's one of the first time I actually looked at one of my own lyrics and gone, actually, that's that's pretty strong. I'm happy with that. And I hate... I have a very love-hate relationship with my own work. So to be able to look at it and go, actually, that stands okay. Uh, it's pretty good for me. That's awesome. Can I ask a few personal questions? Go for it, yeah. Okay. I- I'm curious, you know, when when songwriters write about topics to do with other people, for example, your mother passing away and your student um, committing suicide, you know, those are obviously strong topics that, you know, invoke a strong emotion. However, I feel that most of the time you don't necessarily snap into action until it, you know, something it sparks off inside of you because it's triggered something of your own history. Um, have you personally gone through episodes of 
depression or, or uh, oh, he left the building, guys. <laughs> I think we had, oh, and we're back. <laughs> I was like, oh, did the question annoy you? <laughs> are we back? You are back. I was like, where did you go? I was in the middle of my question and you disappeared. I'm like, did I get too personal? <laughs> you there? Can you hear me? Uh, can you hear uh, me? I hate it when that happens. Uh, can you hear me? Are we good? You look confused. I think I'm back. Okay, cool. Can you hear me? <laughs> yeah, it's great, it's great timing, wasn't it? Sorry about that. <laughs> I can I can hear you. Yeah. Perfect, perfect. So my, my question was like, um, you know, ha given the sensitivity of the topic. I can, um, yep. Yep, cool. No, no, I'll write a message. Okay. No, I can hear you now. We're good. We're good. You're back with me. Welcome back. Um, so my, my question is, can yeah, you just cutting in and out a little bit? That's all. Okay. Oh, interesting. Okay. Um, my question is like, when you, uh, started writing this song, did it invoke any of your own personal experiences with depression or being suicidal? Can you just ask the first part of that again? Sorry. It just cut out again. When you, when you first started writing, when you decided to write this song, when you began your journey with writing March, did it in, did you invoke your own personal experiences with depression and suicide not suicide but depression for sure okay yep. okay. okay it's some, something I something I've always had to deal with both me and lots of people around me okay but i can't honestly say i've been to that particular spot that's good that's good i'm glad to hear it yeah so um, i didn't I invoke did anything as stuff but yeah it, it certainly informs what i write informs a lot of what I write. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. I just I'm curious about, you know, how, how you relate to the content that you're writing, you know? Um, cool. So have you received any feedback from friends or family about March? Am I breaking up again? Is that what's going on? Have you, are you there? Yeah, I think we're back. Okay, cool. Have you received any feedback from friends, oh, or, friends family? or family? Yeah. Um, or fans. Not about the song, no. Uh, okay. Okay. No, not not about the song, <laughs> no, strangely enough. It's it's connected with a lot of people, but um, like it's it's been... feedback about it at all interesting okay so what is it about um this song for you like is there a way that you would like it to hit people um no not necessarily i i, I don't like to be telling as i said i don't like to be telling people what to think or how to feel mm. I, i'm hoping people would listen to it and that thing that think firstly called june fingers crossed uh secondly hang on what's he singing about what, what are the words there? What are the lyrics? What, are, what does that actually mean? Mm -hmm. And then start exploring that, you know, and if there's no meaning that resonates, cool. But maybe if there is meaning that resonates, that's, that's cool as well. Um, that's what I would hope. I would hope people would go back and listen to it a third or fourth time just to go back and, okay, what's he talking about, you know? Mm -hmm. And because it's the internet, I'd be quite happy if people got in touch and went, you know, what the hell are you talking about? Because that would be cool. That's how it works now, isn't it? Indeed. <laughs> um, so what makes this your life-changing song? That wasn't an ad, by the way. That wasn't. I, no, I love it. Carry on. Keep doing that. <laughs> Sorry, no, I wasn't advertising. It's just that that's, that's how it works. And here we are talking. We're, talk, we're talking on the other side of the world about this sort of stuff now, and it's so easy to do it. So, you know, I'd love to have reached out to someone like Bowie or Eno or, or Iggy Pop and gone, hey, what do you mean? You yeah. Know? That real. would have been great. For real. For real. Uh, Bowie, of course, that, that would, I have so many questions for Bowie, um, mm -hmm. but what, mm -hmm. it, what is this that makes, what is it about, uh, this particular song that makes it your life changing song? Because I managed to, it's because I got to the end of it and it felt complete 
and it still feels complete. And we released it in 18 and we got it onto something like 200 different radio stations around the world. Wow. Uh, and it resonated with people and it still resonates with people. And I wouldn't go so far as to say it's the defining song or anything, but it was a really powerful statement mm -hmm. and it's got legs. I mean, it's just about to go live on Vivo in the next like three or four days. Right. And, you know, we've got, it's, it's, and plus also I'm really happy with the video because the video pretty much echoes the, the, the intent of the song and the, and the way of the song. And it sort of changes like, actually, you know, you can do this. This is actually mm -hmm. a quite a powerful statement. And it's like, cool, it's, you know, and I can go back and listen to it and, as I say, enjoy it. So uh, in terms of life changing, it's quite powerful to me to actually listen, you know, like your own work because uh, I don't usually. So that's, you know, that's, you know, where it comes from. I love it. I love it. Well, on that note, let's have a look at this video okay. uh, by Date Month Year. Oh, you can't hear that. Let me try that again. Um, there we go.
That's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. There you have it. Beautiful. Great, uh, you know, use of iconic New Zealand scenery, of course, but oh, yeah. beautiful, beautiful video. Um, who's the actor? James. I, I, I wasn't very involved with the um, direction. I, I tried to keep her. I, I was a little bit involved, but not very much at all. Uh, I, I tend to get involved too much. But his name's, name's James. I've just forgotten the second name. <laughs> Good old James. I love it. I love it. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Um, you know, March is obviously there's some there's some stunning lyrics you know that go through. But I, um, the I, I just love the not vagueness, but the, the open to interpretation the way that you approach the song. And I think um, it's prevalent in, uh, as you said, in a lot of your lyrics. Um, you're very you, you're very showy as opposed to telly, <laughs> which yeah. I, I think is a, is a gorgeous um, a gorgeous approach to songwriting. And of course, um, anybody who's watching this who wants to learn more about date month year, how can we get in touch with you? Well, we uh, we are on all the socials, and so. But the, when I say all the socials, the, the the prominent ones, obviously, we've got the YouTube channel, which is probably a good place to start actually, because there's a cinematic element to what we do. So all our music videos just a little bit different mm -hmm. uh, and in fact sometimes quite a lot different so youtube is a good place to start uh particularly enjoying ig at the moment instagram is just great and awesome. twitter for the older folks and uh the the facebook we still do the facebook and, and those are our main ones yeah the, <laughs> okay, the so facebook is day month here on all handles or yes. what's your, what's yes. your great yep. awesome okay and that takes brings us to the end of our first uh the songs that changed my life podcast for this year i can't believe it thank you so much trevor um for joining me and sharing your song march for everybody who wants to get in touch of course date month year on all socials um and you know be in touch get, get in touch with them once you've uh you know listened to the catalog gosh words what are they um, <laughs> um and you know Give them your feedback because, I mean, at the end of the day, that's what indie musicians really thrive off of uh, is getting to know their audience and having that connection and communication um, grow. It's our, it's, and, our, and, it's our biggest asset. That is yeah, that, that very thing. Absolutely. Yep. Is there anything else that you'd like to share before we, before we nosey off? No. Well, I could waffle on all day, but, you know, we're all busy people, aren't we? So, no, no, but thank you for taking the time. And, uh, it's yes, yeah, it's, it's a pleasure to be able to go through a song like this and, and amount of detail. Yeah. So thanks for the thanks for the opportunity, really. Of course, of course. And for everybody else, again, please check out Day Month here. Uh, check out my new book, My Life, My Songs for Healing. And until Thursday, be good, be kind, spread love like it's going to fashion. Be your own kind of superhero, and please don't forget to brush your teeth on a daily basis. Dental hygiene is important. <laughs>